Welcome back to Eastside Reviews, and I'm here with another movie review as I continue to make my way through some DC films. We are here now with an adaptation from the long-running DC uh, animated uh, cinematic universe. It is one of my f absolute favorites, and this is kind of a um, kind of a Dwayne McDuffie leap. Uh, yesterday we did uh, Static Shock, which is based on the character Static from the Milestone line of comics. And today we are reviewing Justice League Doom, based on a uh, story, uh, Tower of Babel, not written by Dwayne McDuffie, but this actual movie itself was written by Dwayne McDuffie, and it was released a little bit after his passing in 2011, and so uh, we get a nice tribute to him uh, at the end of the movie. Uh, but yes, the Tower of Babel storyline is one of the more, um, it's a re really well-received story, and it shows something that, um, yeah, that that uh, we all kind of know, we all kind of have a suspicion. It shows, it's a story really of Batman's paranoia and the amount of perceived mistrust that he has towards his fellow uh, members of Justice League. Uh, Batman in the story uh, Tower of Babel, he has contingency plans in case any members of Justice League decide to go rogue or uh, taken over via mind control or, you know, uh, if anything happens to them, uh, the contingency plans are going to be in effect so that the Earth is essentially saved from these people because as Batman lays out, the Justice League comprises some of the most dangerous and powerful people in the world, in the universe. You have people like Aquaman, Green Lantern, uh, Wonder Woman, Superman, uh, so many powerful heavy hitters. And this isn't the first time that we saw something like this. Uh, the original Tower of uh, Babel storyline is from 2000. We also got some of this in the uh, Justice League Unlimited uh, series in the first season of Justice League Unlimited. There was paranoia from Earth. They had to come up with plans to fight the Justice League in case they went rogue. Earth was kind of paranoid. The government was kind of paranoid because, again, what what you going to do if Superman and Wonder Woman and Green Lantern decide, yeah, we, we kind of want to rule over the Earth. And they had to come up with plans. And in this case, Batman comes up with the plans in the Tower of Fable storyline. It has long running repercussions. It, uh, again, builds up a lot of mistrust between the, <clears throat> excuse me, it builds up mistrust between Batman and a lot of the other superhero community. And it also kind of trickles down to the Teen Titans because Robin, uh, Tim Drake, he was a member of the Teen Titans, essentially the leader of the, uh, the leader of Teen Titans. He, you know, uh, people had mistrust about him and they were wondering like, hey, do you have plans to stop us? And it really is, it's one that kind of broke the Justice League. And in the 2000s, there were a lot of storylines with the Justice League, where Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, where there were problems between the, the, the Trinity and there were some, uh, this isn't as bad as, um, as Identity Crisis. That one is a little more sketchy with what goes down, but this is still, um, it's a gift. Great story in the uh, Tower of Babel storyline. I highly recommend reading. It. And so the Justice League Doom movie uh, has a loose adaptation of that. We see in the very beginning the Royal Flush Gang, uh, King, Queen, Ace, Ten, and Jack. They're uh, robbing kind of a diamond depository or repository. I don't know what they're robbing. Uh, they're 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 jacking a place of diamonds, and they have technology that they um, that is really above their intellect and above their pay grade level. And we see the mystery kind of unravel of, okay, who's behind that plot and what's the bigger plan that's going on? And we eventually find out that it is the immortal Vandal Savage. In Tower of Babel, it is Ra's al Ghul who's behind, taking out the Justice League. And in this one, it is Vandal Savage. So two characters who are very long lived, who are damn near immortal in our and have built up vast empires and so you, you kind of see the connection and so i think that is a really smart choice and vandal savage in this one he builds up the legion of doom it consists of uh, Maloth the ock star sapphire mirror master bane uh metallo as well as um cheetah take on the various members of the justice league to take them out and they come up with contingency plans and they steal they essentially steal batman's plans 
to take out the members of the league. With Superman, it's shooting him with a kryptonite bullet. With Wonder Woman, it's uh, poisoning her so that she sees a whole bunch of copies of Cheetah and she just beats the shit out of uh, a whole bunch of people, uh, either to cause her to have a heart attack or an aneurysm or be shot by a cop because she's attacking civilians after she ends up getting poisoned. With Green Lantern, his was the weakest one. It was to put him in a scenario where he thinks he's failed and he kind of gives up being the Green Lantern, which I, that, one, that one was the weakest one. Uh, with Flash, it is implanting a bomb within his wrist. If he slows down, it explodes. If he tries to remove it, it explodes. And so that's a, a really uh, messed up scenario for him. And with Martian Manhunter, it is he, he gets poisoned as well with um, magnesium carbonate, which he sweats out and which causes him to get caught on fire. And the movie does a good job of, um, of building up that suspense. For me, I do feel it is a little too short. I would have loved to have seen it kind of go on a little bit more, uh, but I really enjoyed it. Oh, and for Batman, uh, Bane ends up jumping him after he removes his parents' bodies from his graves. Uh, the voice cast is uh, excellent as well. For the Justice League, uh, and this is for the first time in a, in a pretty, pretty long time, in about six years since the finale of Justice League Unlimited, we got a lot of the primary cast from the old DC uh, AU to reprise their roles uh, uh, in, in this movie. Kevin Conroy, who pretty much has never stopped being the voice of Batman, he stars as Batman and Bruce Wayne. Tim Daly, he returns as Clark Kent, kal Superman. Uh, Susan Eisenberg, she starts as Wonder Woman. Carl Lumbly, he voices uh, the Martian Manhunter, as well as uh, Malika Ma. uh, Michael Rosenbaum makes his return as The Flash. Uh, Nathan Fillion, who wasn't a part of the DC animated universe, but he's essentially kind of become the main animated voice of Hal Jordan. He is, uh, again, he's uh, the Green Lantern. Bumper Robinson, he has role as Cyborg. And uh, Phil Morris, he stars as Vandal Savage, the role that he played in, in uh, the Justice League. Um, again, I really enjoyed this movie. It's a fun trip down memory lane to see. Uh, I love the, the pairing off with the, uh, the villains and the heroes that they're trying to destroy. I think the story itself is logical in a way because if you have a gathering of the most powerful beings on Earth, on in, in the universe, essentially, you kind of need a plan to stop them if shit goes wrong. And as we've seen with, uh, with Invincible, uh, as we've seen with the boys, you kind of need a plan to stop Superman if he decides to go rogue. If something happens to Superman, Jesus Christ, Earth is kind of fucked. And we've seen that with the Injustice movie, with the Injustice games. And I think this shows Batman, he's hyper prepared and he's hyper, he's thinking of that. He doesn't think of it as, I'm violating your trust. He thinks of it like, look, I'm putting the security of Earth ahead of everything else. Else, if you guys, if we decide to go rogue, this is it. And it is highlighted that Batman didn't come up with a plan to stop himself, Vandal Savage did. And Superman points that out by Batman, you're a little too arrogant because you didn't come up with a plan to stop yourself. But Batman says, hey, if anything ever goes wrong, if I go rogue, the Justice League will stop. Me. Well, not if it's the, uh, the Batman who laughs because uh, we, we, we've seen how that story goes out, but uh, the, the sentiment is still there. And I really do, again, I enjoy this movie and I highly recommend it. It's currently available on HBO Max, so if you have that streaming service, go ahead and check it out. The designs of the characters do resemble the designs of the Young Justice characters because that cartoon was also uh, gonna come out that year. And so there's a little similarity and I do, I appreciate the similar look. It, it makes uh, makes things a little bit easier to transition. Uh, if you're a visual, if you're a fan, it's like, okay, that's a little similar. Um, and it's one of the last really great DC uh, animated movies for a while because they would in, uh, we would get the uh, Justice League Flashpoint paradox, and that would be, would uh, begin a trend of movies that are uh, interconnected and are more based on the Me 52. And while some of those movies I do enjoy, I like Batman Bad Blood, I think uh, Death of Superman is pretty damn cool. Um, some of those movies are good. I do think the older ones are a bit 
better, uh, such as Justice League Doom, Batman Under the Red Hood, and uh, Crisis on Two Earths, because they did play play around with the style a little bit. They did play around with the voice casting, and I enjoyed that aspect. And so um, recent DC animated movies, they're kind of going back to that. Um, Batman Soul of the Dragon looks different from Superman Man of Tomorrow, and uh, Justice Society looks a little bit different from both of those movies. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, more of these new movies come out. Uh, Long Halloween is going to be coming out uh, very soon, so I'm looking forward to that. But in the meantime, as far as Justice League Doom, really fun movie. A little bit short, but it's but it is what it is. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I hope you are taking care of yourselves. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time for another review. We've got one more week of uh, DC movies to go. Uh, actually, two more weeks because uh, June has uh, five Wednesdays and five Tuesdays. So normally on the last week of the month, I do a full season review. This month, I'm going to switch things up. I'm going to review some episodes of Justice League as well as uh, the final movie that I'm going to be reviewing, which is Batman Assault on Arkham. And then at the end of the month, we're gonna switch things up with uh, some new reviews of uh, some, some show, a show and a movie that I really do enjoy and that I think you guys are going to get a blast out of as well. We're gonna wrap up the DCEU with the trip to the very beginning with Man of Steel. And then I'm gonna be reviewing uh, some episodes of Batman the Brave and the Bold. So it's going to be a fun time to wrap up the month over the next couple of weeks. Like I said, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, follow me on all the social medias at Jamel727. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.